this would be another question and answer video and it's about did Jesus Christ drink alcohol I already did one of these about this topic just a few days ago but they wanted me to go a little bit more in depth on it in Matthew 11 18 and 19 it says for John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he hath the devil the son of man came eating and drinking and they say behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber a friend of publicans and sinners but wisdom is justified of her children. Here are three simple reasons why I don't believe Matthew eleven nineteen proves that Jesus drank alcohol. Here's three reasons. Because he's a king, he fulfilled all righteousness, and he was only declared guilty by association. Notice it said John came neither eating nor drinking. So did John never eat or drink in his life? That couldn't be it. It's that John didn't eat and drink with publicans and sinners. But Jesus did. Jesus came eating and drinking. Jesus did eat with publicans and sinners. They had a different type of ministry going on. In Matthew eleven nine. 9... 10 through 13 it says and it came to pass as jesus sat at meeting in the house behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples and when the pharisees saw it they said unto his disciples why eateth your master with publicans and sinners but when jesus heard, heard that he said unto them they that be whole need not a physician but they that are sick but go ye and learn what that meaneth I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke 15, 1 and 2. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So you see, Jesus ate with publicans and sinners. And they declared Jesus guilty by association. And there are times where maybe I visited an own drug dealer in a neighborhood to give them the gospel. And someone might have thought, well, I bet he's going to go buy drugs or something. Wrong. I was giving them the gospel. But they labeled me guilty just by going to the house. Now, we are supposed to abstain from all appearance of evil. However, sometimes the job we need to do is more important than what a person will think and say about us. They unfairly declared Jesus guilty by being associated with publicans and sinners. In John eight forty four, Jesus tells the Pharisees that ye are of your father, the devil. And they act just like him because the devil is also an accuser. Jesus Christ did not drink alcohol. He was simply declared guilty by associating with sinners and he associated with publicans and sinners in an attempt to get them to repentance next he doesn't drink alcohol because he's king the accusers in matthew eleven nineteen 19 are the ones who reject him as their king they are the same type of people who cried out we have no king but caesar and john nineteen fifteen. no matter what they say Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords. And a, a crowd of people like that who doesn't want Jesus to be king, they're going to do what they can to discredit him. And do you, Because do you know what it says a king should abstain from? Now remember, Jesus Christ is king. And in Proverbs 31, 4, it says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink not for kings to drink wine nor for princes strong drink god is supreme king and god wrote the book and also in the same book he calls himself the prince of peace he also wrote proverbs 31 4 which says it is not for kings to drink wine it's not for princes strong drink surely wine and strong drink are something he would have abstain, abstained from. And there is no doubt that he's king. He declares himself to be king. And the gospel writers call him king. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2, the wise men called him king. In Matthew 21, 5, it says, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. 
In Matthew 25, 34, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 27, 37, And set up over his head an accusation written, This is Jesus, king of the Jews. That's what they put above him when he was on the cross, mocking him. They didn't want him to be king. But he was king. Jesus Christ didn't drink alcohol for the simple reason that he is a king. And not just a king, but the king. A righteous king. So the people in Matthew eleven nineteen would be quick to accuse him of doing things uncomely for a king. Next, Jesus Christ didn't drink alcohol because he fulfilled all righteousness. And those accusers in Matthew eleven nineteen had Jesus Christ under a microscope. They couldn't find anything wrong with him, so they had to make it up. In Luke 23, 4, it says, Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. He was the only one who could live a sinless life. If he drank alcohol or made alcohol, for people to drink at that wedding feast, then he broke the law. Habakkuk 2.15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Proverbs 23.31, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Someone said, I just have a little red wine for dinner. I don't get drunk. I just like a little bit. But if you can't look at it, then how can you drink it? If someone wants to drink alcohol, they have every right to do it. I would never say something to somebody if they drink alcohol. I've been at someone's house that invited me over for dinner. I had no idea they were going to be drinking. Uh, it was a, a much older uh, family than me. They knew that I didn't drink. And while we were uh, eating dinner, they took out some alcohol and started drinking it. And they said, well, I know you're a Baptist, and I know Baptists don't like drinking. And they ex began to explain to me how Jesus drank wine and, and all these things like that. I never said anything to them about about it at all. I mean, that's their business, what they're, what they're doing. But if they were going by the Bible... And if, if drinking alcohol really wasn't a sin, it would be a sin to drink it in front of a another Christian who does think it's a sin because you're going to make your brother to offend. Now, it, it didn't bother me because it's not my problem what they do. But still, they, they did wrong by drinking it in front of their their brother or sister in Christ that is against drinking alcohol. So, I mean, even if it's even if it's not a sin, which I believe it is, it, you're still going to be in situations where it would be. And using Jesus Christ to justify drinking is worse than drinking itself. Any verses they come up with that even hint that a Christian can drink would have to override all of the other biblical proof that they shouldn't drink. A commonly asked question at work is, do you think a Christian should or can drink? And I answer that question with a question. Sometimes the best answer is a question because it really shows people the how silly the question is. I mean, well, no question is a silly question. But, you know, some questions, you if you just think about it, you have a common sense answer. You may not have, if you, if you don't read the Bible, you may not have the Bible answer, but you have a common sense answer there. But I answer that question with a question. I said, if you see me reading my Bible today at work, and then tomorrow you see me drinking a beer or wine or whatever, what would you think about me? And they always say, well, you would be a hypocrite. They answered their own question. They didn't even have to have a Bible. They don't know the Bible. But they were able to answer that question. Should a Christian drink alcohol? If you want the average lost person to laugh and scoff at you in the Bible, go ahead. If drinking alcohol causes a lost person to believe you're a hypocrite, then can you really justify drinking? And don't get mad at me, I'm just answering the question. If the average lost person knows drinking is wrong, 
and that drinking is something they do and not what they think a Christian should do, then doesn't that tell you something about drinking? I heard a few months ago these guys talking at work about some preacher who works there, and they said he goes around preaching, and yet he drinks all this wine. They said some preacher, some preacher he is. And, you know, people like that just make it harder on other Christians. They give lost people occasion to blaspheme. Lost people are looking for a reason to discredit Jesus Christ in the Bible. They are looking for a reason to not be like you. And if they are already like you because you do the same stuff that they do, they will think, well, why should I be any different anyway? They are like those Pharisees in Matthew eleven nineteen. They are looking for some uncleanness in you and in Jesus Christ. So they'll see you drinking alcohol and really be able to say a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. Now, Jesus ate with publicans and sinners. But what did he tell them? He told them, go and sin no more. Matthew eleven nineteen is the Lord Jesus Christ's enemies accusing him. And in the movies and in the music and in the workplace and churches and in any Christian circle, they are still accusing him to this day, saying, well, Jesus drank wine. They say, you know, Jesus drank wine, and I'd bet we'd get along just fine. They say, if I could have a beer with Jesus. They say, well, you know, Jesus turned the water to wine. But don't forget, there are two kinds of wine in the Scripture. And new wine is just grape juice. Proverbs 3.10, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. If it is new wine, then it isn't alcohol. If the press is burst with new wine, this proves new wine isn't alcohol. It hasn't set around to ferment. In Isaiah 65, 8, it says, Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster. If it's found in the cluster, then it's just talking about grape juice. When it comes right down to it, people are going to do what they want to do. They want to drink alcohol. And they're going to do anything they can to justify doing so. They may bring up not drinking wine in excess. However, the excess is in the wine itself. In 1 Peter 4, 3 and 4, it says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So it said it uh, in verse 3, excess of wine. So they say, well, it's okay to drink as long as you don't do it in excess. It says in verse 4, excess of riot. But is, it, is it ever okay to riot? Just a little bit? No, it's never okay to riot. The excess is in rioting itself. Just like the excess is in the wine itself. Not in how much you're drinking. Proverbs 23 said you're not even supposed to look at it. So it's not okay to drink it as long as you don't get drunk. And that's something else that confuses me. Uh, supposedly, I mean I've never drank, but supposedly some people can, can drink more and not get drunk. And then somebody else can drink a, a little bit and get drunk. So how do you know how much you can drink unless you've gotten a little bit drunk? That's what confuses me. First uh, Timothy 5.23, it says, Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and then often infirmities. That's another one people use to justify drinking. If Paul is going to tell Timothy to drink a little wine, well, Proverbs 23 says not to even look at the wine, I doubt that he's telling him to drink alcoholic wine. And if if it was, I mean, it's like, you know, we've what we've got today in medicine. Things like that. But I mean, people are using this to for to do social drinking and then posting it on Facebook even though they claim to be a Christian, they're taking pictures of all these alcoholic drinks. And putting it on Facebook. And they may not be getting drunk. Maybe, Probably most of them aren't even getting drunk. But all of those lost people. 
you know what they're saying about you. Well, she goes to church. Uh, she, she's supposed to be a Christian. Why is she on there posting pictures of herself drinking alcohol? That's a horrible testimony for you and for your parents and everybody. Lost people are watching you. They're looking for some uncleanness in you. They would love to say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber. They would love to say that about you. And, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, you're not, you're not going to be uh, accountable for people saying you did something as long as what they're saying isn't true. Uh, Peter talks about it. He, he, you know, when they speak evil of you, don't let that evil they're saying about you be true. They spoke evil of Jesus Christ, but the, what they were saying about him wasn't true. He did eat with publicans and sinners, but he didn't participate in the sinful activities they were doing. But they were had him under a microscope, and they were trying to find some uncleanness in him. Lost people are watching you every day, and they're trying to find some uncleanness in you. Don't let the un uncleanness be true. Are you going to use 1 Timothy 5.23? where it says, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, are you going to use that to override all the clear verses in Scripture on the subject of drink and alcohol? Are you going to use 1 Timothy 5.23 to override Proverbs 20, 23? I mean, uh, I don't believe the Apostle Paul is going to tell Timothy to drink a little alcohol. I mean, I believe that's grape juice there. I believe when the Bible talks about wine in a good light, it has to be grape juice. When it talks about it in a negative light, it has to be alcoholic wine. But now, I believe if, if you still believe it's okay for a Christian to drink alcohol, you go right ahead. But if you're drinking it in front of other Christians that's offended by it, that is a sin. And there are plenty of Christians that are against drinking alcohol. And all lost people believe a Christian should not drink alcohol. I mean, if you don't believe if you don't believe that, then you haven't been around much. Because any lost person I come in contact with, if they saw me drinking alcohol after the stand that I've I've taken for the Bible and everything else. My, my old testimony would be ruined and shot. They would never listen to me again if they saw me drinking alcohol. I mean, it ruins your testimony. I don't care if you're not getting drunk or, or and things like that. If they just saw you, I'm, I mean, I'm careful. Like, when I go to a place, I don't want to even get a drink that looks like alcohol. Because I don't want my testimony to be ruined. And, you know, it, it, it's really going to hurt your testimony with Christians and non-Christians. The crazy thing is, the lost people know it's wrong more than a lot of Christians do. From what I've seen and heard. But I hope this answers the question. I do not believe that Matthew eleven nineteen proves that Jesus Christ drank alcohol. And if somebody wants to prove that, they have to use that to override all of these other clear verses in the scriptures.